Hey Moore World, this is Jake with Mowers Direct. Today I have Aaron's with us and I have JR from Aaron's. And today we're gonna go over the um, procedure once you do receive a zero turn from them. Once we get the, the mower shipped to them, what's the things that the customers can expect the most once they receive it? First thing they're gonna to wanna to do when they get the mower uh, off the truck is to quickly take a visual inspection of the crate. Um, we have one sitting right over here. So you're gonna to wanna to take a look, make sure that the crate looks to be in good shape. There's not a bunch of holes or damage to it, as well as the plastic bag that's gonna look intact to make sure that there's nothing uh, that looks like there's been anything wrong to it. So. This one looks pretty good, so you'd sign off on this. Um, obviously, getting this off the crate is going to be the hard part. We're going to break this down. Correct. Um, that seems to be the hardest part for everyone is breaking it down and transporting it off of the unit, right? Yeah, it's definitely, you know, how to, how to pop this one off, and you can do it multiple ways. Um, if you have a chainsaw, you can cut through here. Be careful of the staples because you don't want to hurt your chainsaw. If you don't, chainsawsdirect.com is another add-on that you should go with right here. Obviously, you could pop this off. You could pop the top off, and then you can kind of fold the sides down is, is another way to go through it. Then you'll take the, the plastic bag off. There's a couple of straps right here to keep it secured. So you'll cut those off. And then, uh, then you, again, you can, you can visually inspect the lawnmower as well to make sure that everything else looks good. So now how do we make this look like that? So what other steps are we gonna do for this? So what's gonna happen is after you get the crate busted out and the bag open, you're gonna have basically the unit just sitting on top of the crate right here. Okay. So what you'll wanna do is, depending on the machine, um, like this Icon XD right here, this seat will be folded down and laying flat on the seat pan right here. Um, the first thing that you would do is you would take this, this foot pedal that's normally going to be here on shipping and turn it over to the side where you can run it right there. Okay. okay? So this is two 916 nuts that you can loosen off and carriage bolts and just take this from there to put it on that side. Then on the other side here in the back, we have a safety leash for the seat. So it prevents the seat from rocking all the way forward after the unit is set up. So you will take this off and tether it into its appropriate spot okay, right down here in this bolt. And that'll keep the seat from rocking forward too far on you as you're going through. The other thing what you're going to do when you're down here is this is your seat switch. So this is going to be potentially off. So you'll want to just connect this through. It's just a spade terminal. Push it up till it clicks in and you can see it positively engage right here in your, awesome. on your switch right there. It's basically telling the, the machine when it's on that you're there. Uh, the unit will not start without this wire and this pigtail being connected in. So it's kind of an important step for our customers. Though, kind huh? of an important step. And if you're mowing and you tend to bounce off the seat, this is what's going to kill the machine to make sure that nothing gets hurt and you're safe on it. Okay? okay. So the other thing you'll have to do is connect your battery. So this would be off, this post would be off, and the screw will be inside here, the bolt. So you'll take that off and put this on there to make, their, make sure it's in there. And since the seat is forward in an accessible position, you're gonna to wanna to check your oil as well. Oil is the lifeblood of your engine, so without oil, you don't wanna start it. Okay? Always recommend checking your oil. Always recommend. We test run them at the factory, but I always always go with an extra set of eyes just to make sure And it's if they need to add some, what would you put in there? Uh, I would put in, depending on your engine manufacturer, whatever they specifically call for. I believe the Kawasaki's here, they like their, uh, their 10W40 uh, okay. in the summertime. Um, but look at the engine manual to make sure what they specify to go through right there. While we're down here, you're gonna pull your operator's manual packet off. It's got your safety instructions, it's got your engine manual and, and everything like that. It's also got your key, so kind of important thing you need that to start with. Okay. So fold our seat back up right here. We're gonna come around to this side, Jake. So you have two choices at this point of what you wanna do. You can either start the machine up and drive off the crate, or okay. you can push the unit off the crate if you didn't want to start it up right, right there. To push it off the crate, what you would have to do is make sure that the parking brake here is disengaged, like that. And then there's actually a couple of releases down here, Jake. Each of the transaxles have its own lever here for a bypass. Okay. So if you can see, what you'll have to do is pull this out, and it's notched right there. You can kind of knock it over, and it stays in the out position. Okay. You would then do the same thing on the other side. And so now, although this is not on the crate, it's very easy to push the unit. So you can push it and get it off the unit that way, put it in your garage or where you want to right. go. You would then push these levers back in to re-engage the hydrostatic drives. That way when you're ready to go, it's going to go through on there. So you'd probably recommend two guys to push it off then? I would definitely recommend two guys to push it off, yes. Um, again, if you peel the crate off, be cautious of the staples. Okay. These are air-filled tires. 
tires. You don't want to put a hole in your tire on your brand new tire as you're uh, pulling your brand new mower off the crate. Um, since we're talking tires, uh, we over inflate these for shipping so they don't, they don't uh, go flat bouncing down the road with the semis. So the rear tires is a max inflation of 10 PSI. The front is actually, it's a much smaller tire, it's a denser tire, it's a max inflation of 46. Okay. Um, so obviously you're going to want to get a tire gauge on those and make sure that they're at least to the max standard or a little bit below that if you want, depending on your ride quality. So Jake, after we've got the unit off the crate, we've checked the oil and put, put all the, the handles and everything on correctly, we're going to want to put in the go juice. Okay. So your fuel cap is right over here. You can unscrew that and put your gasoline in there. One thing to be mindful of, um, nothing more than 10% ethanol. Okay. Ethanol is a killer in all small engines. It's probably the worst thing in there. Um, so nothing more than 10% uh, ethanol. You can get it from your pump at 87 octane. It's got 10% in there. Ideally, in a perfect world, if you could find ethanol-free fuel, that would be best to, to pour your machine. But it even clearly states on here, no E85. We don't want anything higher than a 10% ethanol rate. So your regular 87 octane should be fine for you? Yep, exactly. Okay. So go ahead and fill her, fill her full of gas. It'll click in to make sure that you know your cap's on tight. And we're ready to go through and start this thing. All right. uh, the two things that need to happen when you're going to start this machine is the parking brake has to be up in the engaged position. Okay. Your PTO switch needs to be in the down position. Okay. If either of these are not the correct way, the unit's not going to start because it, it determines there's an issue. So the parking brake is up in the in the neutral or in the lock position. Your PTO switch is in the the down position, the off position. Um, what's going to happen there now is you have your throttle. Um, so throttle is always turtle and rabbit. Turtle slow, rabbit fast. Um, I like to set mine right in the middle, a little bit high side of the middle right there. Now this machine is going to be a little bit different because we've been inside and it's not uh, it's not 30 degrees out or inside here like it is outside today. But normally you would have to pull your choke lever up as well when you're okay. starting it. Um, this one, I know it's not going to need it, so I'm going to push this back down. But if it's cold weather, you're always going to have the choke start, and then you'll go through the, the starting procedure and turn the key. Now, if you notice, I did start this not sitting on the seat. Um, there is a seat switch in there, but the reason it was able to do that is because the parking brake was engaged. Okay. If we were to go through and I started this and left it started and dropped the brake, it would immediately die because it knows that nobody's, nobody's on the seat, seat so, so therefore it shouldn't be running right now. So in case you fall off or anything, it does kill it for you. That's so correct. That's the important, that safety switch underneath the seat. So. Yes, exactly. So then depending on how, how, how tall or short you are, you can adjust your seat. Um, this seat is adjustable forward and backwards, so you'll just have to unscrew these knobs right here. And then you can rock that seat forward or back to see how you want it to uh, sit on the machine okay. and then lock those and tighten them back up into position there. So if you're a bigger guy, you recommend probably setting that back a little further? Taller guy, you're going to want to scoot back, give yourself a little bit more room by all okay. means, yeah. yeah. First things you got to check are, are if the safety switches are, are correct, right? If the seat switch is on or a switch, seat switch is plugged in, if the parking brake is engaged, if the blades are off. Because typically when people call and they complain and it doesn't start, they ran it out of gas in their yard because they're not paying attention. They left the key on, they left the, the, so they come back, they gas it up, and then they can't start it. So first thing I would obviously check, or, or even out of the box, make sure your switches, you know, parking brake on, PTO off, seat switches clicked in. Um, at that point, is the battery connected? I mean, we, we kind of got to start from the beginning right here and yeah. work our way through. Um, you know, if the battery is connected, is there gas in the mower? I mean, it's, it's simple stuff. I know, it sounds but, dumb, but once they get it off the thing, I mean, we got people that get it and they get it all broken down and they can't get it started. But since you said it'll start with the safety switch not attached, mm -hmm. obviously it's going to start up and they'll be like, oh, it's fine. And then it won't go anywhere though once it, they get on it, right? Correct. So that's the big thing. If it's not going anywhere, it keeps dying on them. So it's something we have to make sure that's connected correctly. Yes. Um, transport mode, we just went over. So definitely something they have to look at if it's not going forward. Um, or you know. if it's jerking violently to one side, potentially one came, one got re-engaged and one didn't. So okay. if they go and hit the gas with both, or hit the sticks with both of them, and then all of a sudden pulls to the right, you know, the left yeah. one's driving, the right one's not. So that's something, that, again, that they're going to want to check. I mean, obviously tell everybody, as soon as you get on the thing, start it and run it at Turtle, man. That way you just, you know that everything seems to be jiving right okay. before you're going to go out there and start tearing off on it. The big thing with, with if the unit is driving, you know, if you're going full bore and it's pulling a little bit to the right, 
at that point, a left tire, you want to slow that left tire tracking down to be able to keep it so it's maintaining a constant speed. Okay. You don't want to speed up the slower tire, you want to slow down the faster tire. Okay, we'll figure that one out, but on that one, it's pretty simple. On the uh, on this one apex, here, it's, yeah. it's exactly, it's you loosen this jam nut and it's a, a socket head cap screw that you would just adjust that okay. uh, down there. All right, JR, there. thanks for coming out today. It was a pleasure talking with you. Jake, appreciate uh, it. For more content like this, please do check out our YouTube channel. Uh, Power Equipment Direct. For other information, you can go visit us on our website, powerequipmentdirect.com and mowersdirect.com as well.